Hey, bros. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Oh, Ninja Times USA. Please uh, follow Ninja Times USA. I'm glad to be a columnist and a contributor for such an amazing platform. Kindly um, follow Ninja Times USA. I'm also a columnist for them. A contributor and a proud one of that you know it hits different when you get to a level in your career and you can explore <laughs> you have the freedom to explore actually right it takes consistency resilience hard work staying through to your goals um, and everything in between so please follow Ninja Times USA our first um, not our first you know the September edition it's going to be out to very soon um, kindly support us with a follow <laughs> uh, and um, yeah Thank you. Waiting for my guest to join the conversation as usual. Thank you to everybody joining. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for those who join Heli Enough. Hi, sis. Hi, Tian. That's a, a beautiful woman with so much positive vibes. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, everyone. Our guest is going to be here soon. Um, hi, famous for life. Is that media? Okay. Kiki, thank you for joining. Kiki would be the moderator for today. Um, yeah. You know, I've been doing this for a bit and I'm, I still find it hard to add someone i know i saw that moderator thing the other day uh, okay kiki i cannot find you i want to make you a moderator so you can control the comment section today i won't have time perhaps to do that so let me know if you're still online and um yeah let me send an invitation to Sunday oh. hi oh my god <laughs> guys in time i just uh... <laughs> sometimes when you send the invitation you know it takes a while i know i know for people to and then it just just came i was still going to say oh i'm waiting for him or to to join us so when it well so, when it comes to things like this i'm always on time we find oh, that we not, but you know <laughs> coming online or coming attending meetings yeah i'll always be on time but thank you amazing. So much for inviting me thank you yeah. thank you so much i know you are an extremely busy person well. interestingly <laughs> i posted the flyer on my whatsapp oh yeah and a couple of people said, oh, we know him. Oh, really? 
<laughs> and they all had good things to say about you. Oh, glad! I'm glad. It's and good I people think that, you know, I'm glad it's the people, good people that reached out. <laughs> but, but great, <laughs> great, thank you. And I said, listen, it's always. I always tell people when you are not in the room, pay attention to what people say about you because, mm. I mean, that also could have transferred to my energy to be. That's if true. someone had said, ah, babe, that guy, you that's want to interview that guy, not be correct person. That's true. But that's true. folks were like, oh my God, amazing guy. And I said, okay, good. I'm glad. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Thank you so much. How was your week? How is the family? Um, uh, family is good. Thanks for asking. Uh, week mm -hmm. has been good. Uh, quite mm -hmm. busy, honestly, quite busy. I think it's extremely busy now because we are sort of running two um, accelerator programs, um, you know, simultaneously. One is the mm -hmm. last in the MZ uh, program, mm -hmm. and then the Google Accelerator just started, kicked off mm -hmm. this week as well. So it's, you know, trying to manage the time and ensuring that, you know, uh, the startup is running effectively as well. So, yeah. So, but, 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 but so far, so good. How about you? How, how, how is everything? Uh, not bad. I thank God. Um, I mean, we're, we're in the world we're living. I tell people that every time your ground touches the ground, yeah. every time your feet, rather, touches the ground daily, yeah. That's enough reason exactly. for you to be grateful exactly. to God, exactly. right? Exactly. So, yeah. for the fact that I'm here today, yeah. so happy yeah. honor to interview you today. All is well. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for joining. I am just going to read um, Tunde's uh, profile. Short. I make it brief because his profile is there. <laughs> 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 All right. So Tunde Omotoye is a Nigerian-born senior business operations analyst in one of Canada's biggest banks. Is that still your profile? No, actually. No, I'm, that has changed. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that because that's sort of what... I've read it a little bit, but that, that's okay. <laughs> well, well, I mean, it's still part of your resume. <laughs> yes, it is. So <laughs> let's still put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> After seeing a string of interesting tweets that he wrote about his work and life experiences, folks started reaching out to him. Tunde has impacted lives through his tweet. He has encouraged people to immigrate positively, of course, yeah. and encourage several young people to find their path in life using his own storytelling approach. Yeah. Tunde is also the co-founder of Human's, Human Squad Canada, yes. yeah. and I'm going to get right into that because, um, you know, there, there's some amazing news you're going to be hearing today that I read about him online and the amazing work they're doing at Human Squad. But first, my question to you is this. Your immigration journey to Canada. Kindly tell us about it. Uh, well, it's a long, it's a long story, but I will, you know, I'll definitely share. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, Canada came to the radar, I think, sometimes in 2014, mm -hmm. while I was in Lagos, Nigeria. I, I wasn't mm -hmm. planning on traveling. It wasn't on my radar. Mm -hmm. I, I was honestly wasn't actively looking or trying to travel. Right. For mm -hmm. me, I was working in um, um, the Chicken Republic head office, uh, which is Food Concepts PLC. I was uh, working mm -hmm. as an HR person there mm -hmm. and all that. But um, an unfortunate event happened sometimes in 2014. I got mm -hmm. robbed. I got robbed of a car. My, myself and my now wife, who was my girlfriend, then in front of her house. So that, that, that um, event actually left me traumatized, if I'm being honest. Like, you know, I've, I've never actually experienced something like that in Lagos. And, um, you know, then I was, I, I just sort of withdrew a bit from, you know, the society, right? I was like, oh, you did it. And I know we always see things happen every time. And then now it has happened to me. I'm like, maybe other worse things that happen to people might also actually happen to me. And, Mm -hmm. and somehow my, my mother-in-law then mentioned, hey, I know somebody who sort of processes admission for people in Canada. Maybe you want to speak to him about it. And um, it sort of also coincidentally happens that then I just got in, I, I was a few months into a promotion at work at my human resources job at uh, Food Concepts PLC. And um, I knew it then that um, with human resources, I had no educational background or qualification for it. I sort of went in there as, a, as an officer, grew up to become an associate, and I was sort of growing in the, in the field. But I, it would be good to have some sort of educational back into it. And this happened, you know, I spoke to this person. He said, hey, I can process admission for you to Canada. I said, okay, let's just give it a try. And I was just sort of going with the flow then while I was still working, going with the flow. 
you know, got the admission, applied for the visa, it came out, I was like, okay, and I did the visa myself uh, back then, right? I was like, okay, it looks like it's going to happen. I, I had not even paid any tuition then. You know, today, before you do all those, uh, you know, process and all that, it's, it's important to pay at least your best method. I hadn't done anything. Okay. And then it came out, I was like, okay, it looks like I'm going to take this bold step and I'm going to uh, sort of um, move, right? And, um, and yeah, and um, came to Canada, uh, came for the human resources program and the good thing mm -hmm. is because I already had some sort of practical knowledge and experience um, in HR back home it really mm -hmm. helped my studies here right mm -hmm. um, although when I came immediately I came I didn't start school a little bit of culture shock deferred my admission mm -hmm. for four months and after I deferred you know I was able to at least um, uh, immerse myself into the system transition gradually met a couple of Canadians who sort of you know explain the nuances, you know, explain how the system works and all that. And that really helped me a lot, right? School started, and before school started, I'd, I'd also gotten textbooks from people who had done HR before my, my, myself, uh, and I, I had already read all those books. So got into class, started, you know, doing very well, flying colors, came out with distinction, and before school finished, and I think I'm already going so much into the detail, but really that's, <laughs> that's so much of the journey right mm -hmm. it, it's, mm -hmm. it sounds interesting now but it's not as um i would say interesting as it was then when i first came and mm -hmm. um for me the processing itself like many people might find it hard now but for me the processing back then wasn't that hard for me for some reason i don't know everything just maybe it was the compensation for for the car that got robbed or for that experience itself right <laughs> that happened to me so mm -hmm. yeah, but, but that's really my journey uh coming to canada and um uh, if I go for that bit, you know, uh, finish school, uh, got retained at the place I was in internship, you know, got another job at the bank and then rose to become a senior BOA. And from there, uh, got another uh, job uh, as a manager, managing a team at uh, mm -hmm. 100 uh, All State Insurance and uh, became a PR sometime since 2017. And then uh, somehow, um, and then, you know, uh, met the eligibility requirement for, for being a citizen and became a citizen last year. So that's really my immigration journey itself okay. from landing here uh, to okay. today, right? Mm. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank I you. must say the, the picture of you um, when you work at the fast food restaurant, yeah. I think even there was one tweet you made that went viral. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we posted on the um, Men Who Inspire yes. page. Yes. You know, and I, I, I think every time I see that picture on my timeline, it sort of like reignites um, mm. something in me to say mm. days of humble beginning. People yeah. need to always know the story. Yeah. But there is really no past fire to. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> There are people with stories yeah. and there are valid stories that are relatable. So thank you so much for, for sharing you. that. Thank you so much. Yeah. So my next question is, I mean, having got into Canada, yeah. of course, let's say the compensation for this traumatic event. <laughs> yes. How were you able to overcome the culture shock? How yes. were you able to navigate the system? Because one of the most... Um, you know, one problem that I know a lot of people have when they immigrate to a new country is the culture shock. That's true. How do I integrate into the system? For some of us, it's the weather. Mm. <laughs> because then you're waking up the next morning you're like, what? Why is it cold? That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so how, please, for the purpose of, you know, young folks who yeah. perhaps might want to travel, um, you know, for any reason, kindly share with us how you were able to navigate your path in Canada. Well, um, a couple of ways. I think um, one thing that I, at least primarily that I think uh, started okay. to help me was mixing with, you know, uh, local Canadians, like people who grew up here, young people, right? Um, people who grew up here, people who had lived okay. here for years. You know, they sort of, you know, explain how things work, you know, where you would be able to get things cheaper, you know, okay. how the bus system works, all those type okay. of things. I would mm -hmm. say I did meet um, a few Nigerians who sort of helped uh, at the beginning, but they were also mm -hmm. trying to find their feet. Right? They were also students, right? So um, meeting with those sort of Canadians sort of solidified that um, immersion itself. So how would mm -hmm. say that in the, um, in the labor market sort of, you know, um, experience itself, what I did was first thing I did was I joined the HR profession. 
right? I first joined that HR profession. I think it was important for me to understand what was happening in my space, in my field, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and they sort of, you know, uh, helped with the transition. Hey, this is how things work. Um, you know, if you want to, if you want to really um, uh, have an edge in the labor market as an HR person, you have to get a certification. You know, this is the website where you will begin to learn the eligibility requirements, all those type of things. Started to network with people who had, you know, who were experienced and were in that space, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's the second one. The third one, the third one is church. Right. For for some people who are either Christians or, or Muslims, you find that there's already a community in many of our in many of our religious uh, spaces. So church really helped also because there were a community of young folks, you know, even adults, people who sort of uh, take you under under their wings. So I think that also helped seeing that community of people that look like you, people that speak like you, people that could advise, you know, you could worship together and all that. So that also uh, sort of really really helped. Uh, um, and in, in transitioning into into the system, and I, I would say uh, many other things, but particularly myself being uh, you know hardworking, right, mm -hmm. um, ensuring that hey, what I've come here to do is for study, and I have to do it very well, right? I have to do that part very well, which was ensuring mm -hmm. that I came out with a very good grade, and with mm -hmm. that I was able to get a good um, uh, good internship. And that internship itself was what, what was what sort of set my foot um, rolling in the corporate world, in the Canadian um, uh, corporate world, right? So um, I would say those are the things that sort of I think helped in transitioning into the system. Uh, things like whether you know, uh, with whether yes, there was there was there was a huge culture shock. I think it was even from the first day I landed. You know, maybe I stepped out of the airport, I went back in, you know, I had to run back in just to get a pick up, um, you know, uh, some uh, another layer of jacket, so to speak, because the jacket that I brought didn't do anything, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say that was there also. There was also food uh, culture shock because I found out that well, at least the first month, my, my, my taste buds weren't just, you know, they were not just responding to everything I was eating. Right, mm. so, uh, but I got that orientation from some of our Nigerians here. This is where you will be able to buy African food stuff. You know, you have to cook yourself. You have to do things uh, this way and that. So that sort of also helped uh, in transitioning um, into into the system. So yeah, so I, I think those are the things that sort of helped in in, in getting you know um, a good and soft landing, so to okay. speak. <laughs> Great. Thank yeah. you so much. And yes, I agree with you. Um, community um, support system. Yeah. Yeah. You know, nobody is an island. Yeah. Everybody needs a support system around them. And I'm happy you acknowledge that. That's true, yeah. Uh, which most people don't do That's at the beginning of their journey. You know, just That's acknowledge the folks who were there for you, right? That's you know, as you walk through your path in life. So thank you so much for sharing that. No now, what are some of the things to consider before relocating to a new country? Ah, wow. There, there are lots. I think... Uh, mm -hmm. For young people who are looking to relocate, the first thing you have to do is first of all do your research very well. Where are you going, right? Mm -hmm. Where is the place you are going to? Mm -hmm. um, you find that so, for some people, they, they get to a new place and they realize, oh, this wasn't what I thought this place would be, and it's mm -hmm. not that way because you did not do your research, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have to do your research to understand the diversity, um, how mm -hmm. many like colored people are in that big okay. pool, okay. Or, okay. or even city that you are going to be mm -hmm. in. Are they Nigerian mm -hmm. like yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. whatever race it is you are, um, okay. I get people like me in that environment. You have to do that research. And the good thing with uh, many countries abroad is the data is out there. You will always see that data there. You will always see that number either on their website or their statistics website and also okay. uh, That's one, right? Uh, two is for students who are coming, it is always okay. important to come with have funds, right? Have money, right? Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of us, uh, for like someone like myself, when I came, you know, I when I defend my admission, I was able to work, save some money for part of my uh, f uh, first uh, semester tuition and all that. But for many okay. students, they want to do this and they come and then they realize, hey, I can't even defend my admission. Then it becomes so difficult for them. So I say, I would say that for folks who are coming to study, it's always important to ensure that, hey, you have your tuition available. You've already, you know, sorted that out before coming, um, uh, right? And uh, you want to ensure that um, while you're, while you're in school, it's study first. You're focusing on your grades. You're focusing on your study. And um, I'll say um, the third one is now for people who come as couples, right, family, mm -hmm. right? Um, you network with the people around you, 
right? Network with the people around you, the, the Nigerians that have been here before or the uh, community of people who have been here before. You want to speak with them, right? How do I get this job? How do I find this? How do I do this, right? That will really, really uh, sort of help um, as well. Uh, and because, uh, thank God for, 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 um, for technology, thank God for social media. A lot of people are forming communities on WhatsApp, on Telegram, okay. ask to okay. these groups, right? Um, okay. I think one thing I, I would say that women have really done or they are doing very well in Canada is they form so much communities, um, you know, pockets of communities where you, you, you join that group and you, you hear one woman say, hey, this community of women, they're taking me out for lunch, they're taking me out for this, they are showing me where to do this, where to get this. I think that really, you know, would really, really help. And then for professionals who are coming, it's, it's important for you to do your research with um, your qualification and your background and, you know, whatever work uh, you're going to be doing, right? Uh, for some people who are, for instance, maybe HR professionals or accountants, accountants, they get there, they find out, hey, my certification is not recognized, right? <laughs> so they will have to sort of start all over again. But before coming, it's, it's important for you to start to, you know, look into it. Um, what's, what's the equivalent of my own certification in Canada, in US, in UK? Okay. Is my certification okay. recognized? What do I need okay. to, to become certified in that country? Right? Okay. All those things by the time. And, and it's important because if you put these things at the back end and say, mm, I will get to it later, you learn and it's hard because there are so many things you have to also focus on. Right? And if you don't, if you don't sort of put these things at the top of your list, you realize that mm -hmm. You have to now start playing catch up. How do I how do I get it done? How do I get it done? Whereas if 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 one had sort of prepared, you know, made some sort of mental notes, some checklist, this is what I need to get, get all okay. the things ready. Maybe it's even before you leave Nigeria, realize uh, or wherever country you come from, you realize you need some documents, you get those ones okay. ahead. So you don't get here and start uh, to look for those um, sort of documents, right? So I'll say yeah. that's sort of the things that one can uh, sort of, you know, uh, look out for and do uh, and prepare yourself before sort of transitioning and coming. Thank you. And I hope the young people here are listening yes. uh, before you make that move, do your yeah. research. That is yeah. my biggest take home from what uh, Tony just shared right now. Yeah. Research is very important. Yeah. Know where, know your what, know your how. Yeah. Those, you know, three things would help you navigate the system properly. Exactly. Exactly. What inspired you to start Human Squad Canada? Mm. Wow. <laughs> Big question. <laughs> what inspired me to start uh, Human Squad Canada? So, mm -hmm. you know, in 2019, I got a promotion at the bank, right? Mm. To become a senior BOA. And um, it was a promotion and also becoming a full-time staff, right? Mm. Previously, I was a contractor. Right, uh, mm -hmm. and then I transitioned uh, for, for the promotion, and then became a full-time staff. And then I realized, I said, "Hey, all this that I'm getting, but a lot of people don't know. A lot of immigrants like me don't know." And then I thought, I had this, you know, you know, when you have this reflection, and you're like, "Hey, mm -hmm. look at this guy that came, was doing, was working in the factory, you know, during um, the time when he was waiting to start school." Uh, mm -hmm you know, all those type of um, things. And here you are today at the bank as a senior BOA, a promotion, a full-time person. I said, okay, maybe I need to, you know, share some of these stories online, right? Mm -hmm. And then I started to um, uh, share my experience online using uh, Twitter primarily. And um, that sort of blew, right? It just, you know, it went sort of viral, at least among the, um, Nigerian Twitter, and I started to just um, share my share my experience and uh, mirroring the journey from Nigeria, Canada, and marrying those sort of um, experiences together. Also, um, sharing uh, for people who are looking to uh, go for interview, career development, people who are sort of new immigrants, people are looking to immigrate, putting out the processes out there, basically. So I started to do that a lot in 2019, and, um, you know, after a while, I realized that a lot of requests started to come, right? People started to message me on LinkedIn, even on Twitter. Oh, well, on Twitter, my DM is locked. A lot of people would ask questions, you know, um, mm -hmm. Instagram, people would come, hey, I'm looking to come to Canada. How do I do it? Uh, can you help mm -hmm. me? Hey, I have this. I want to do this and all that. So mm -hmm. I said it, it was a lot, right? The, the traction was there. But I also wanted to ensure that um, first, I was getting value for my time. 
and whoever it was that was also either speaking with or helping was also getting value for whatever mm -hmm. it is that uh, uh, we were exchanging, right? And that was when I started to think, okay, maybe if I'm getting so much immigration questions, I'm not an immigration consultant myself as at mm -hmm. that time. How about I connect these people to licensed immigration consultants, right? And that was where the, uh, you know the idea of uh, Human Squad came about. And uh, when we sat down, myself and my partner, we thought about okay, what is the name? How do we draft it? You know, what should be sort of the MVP, uh, right? Uh, what would the website look like and all? And then we did all that together. And in June, on June 2020, and this. Months before that, we had been doing that work, doing a lot of paperwork, you know, meeting mm -hmm. with um, immigration consultants, you know, speaking with them on the processes, how would they work, um, how are we going to sort of, um, you know, uh, facilitate these services, basically, so to speak. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, and um, we got to finalize, and on June 1st, 2020, we launched, right? And on the first, first week of launch, we got over 2,000 emails with inquiries on our services, you know, it was wild. It was wild. It was it was so much, but um, at least uh, we were able to sort of um, get to ma majority of those uh, messages. You know, um, telling people how they could either go about it or how how they could submit a service on the website, right? So yeah, so that was what came about the uh, the launch of Human Squad uh, mm -hmm. uh, in 2020. It was really born out of that um, uh, request. It was really born out of that um, you know, a lot of people asking for the need, and it was important mm -hmm. to make it a structure, right? I find mm -hmm. that many times today, most people would have that uh, followership or the number mm -hmm. of people where they would mm -hmm. help, but there's no structure, so you can't trace, mm -hmm. you cannot, you can't put any data behind it to say, okay, this is the number of requests we've processed, this is the number mm -hmm. of. Oh, these are the countries they are coming from. This is mm -hmm. because this consultant process, this is the revenue itself mm -hmm. right? and all those type of things. This is the service cost. This is how much we pay people that are working on on, on uh, requests and all that. So it was important to put a structure behind it. And someone like my, someone with my experience working in the tech space, working with uh, VPs, CIOs and leaders, it would, it would, it would be very, um, I would say, below expectation for me to do something like that without putting the structure um, into place. I think that was really what, I was, oh, that, was that was sort of the idea uh, behind the mass code. Amazing. Structure yeah. is very, very important. Very important. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. And I love the fact that you were able to recognize an opportunity. Yeah. Exactly. and turn it into a vision exactly because yeah. like you said some people tweet blank i know right <laughs> you just keep tweeting you have all those retweets exactly. but how do you measure impact exactly. and turn your followers to your exactly. clients exactly. right and that's exactly. what you did because i exactly. say that i started following you on twitter mm. i think before you even had 10k followers oh, wow. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i started yes. following you from yeah from way back Thank you so, much. so when i see the growth now mm. and the consistency mm. you know of course you just said everything mm. because you took it one step at a time yeah. and then you yeah. step back yeah which a lot of people need to do like okay yeah. now i'm getting more popular and i'm relevant in exactly. this space Exactly. These questions are coming to me. I cannot handle it. So, exactly. so thank you so much for sharing that. No I see quite a number of people want to join the live session. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're still going into our question and answer. But if you have any question for, um, you know, Tunde, please, you know, just wait to the end of the session. Yeah. And we're just going to wait for a few minutes to take some of those questions. You know, for now, let's quickly just wrap up this session. So you grab yeah. the information. You came here for so Sunday as an immigration consultant who mm. you know of course you know the system very well since you've been here for it's it's been ten years right no no it's uh, almost ten years seven years eight or seven yeah seven years. seven years, seven years. you know so you yeah. pretty much know the system yeah, yeah. what are so some of the yeah so what are some of the cities you would um recommend okay for people who want to come here Mm. especially those who want to study we all know the ASU situation right now yeah, yeah right there are a lot of parents who are very concerned for their children education that's true. so and there are some who cannot afford the u of t's that's true that's right so true. what are some of the cities what are the opportunities out there that you would advise people you know to tap into 
Okay. I, I like I like the fact that you mentioned that uh, you know most people will not be able to afford the U of T's, which is the truth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because you know the school fees and the tuition for majority of those schools are sort of you know high yes. there, high up there, <laughs> right? But for for folks who are looking to study abroad, there's always still that opportunity, and mm -hmm. I, I would say um, colleges at first is mm -hmm. where people should look at, right? Mm -hmm. the, the average tuition for colleges in Ontario are fifteen thousand uh, Canadian dollars. Right, mm -hmm. and then people will say, "Oh, but I'm not getting a master's. I'm getting a postgraduate diploma." Yes, you're getting a postgraduate diploma, and uh, to be honest with you, Canada is not a system that there's no class system where oh, this person is master, so we have to pay them. This, mm -hmm. person, this person is PG. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's not like that. It's not like your university polytechnic in Nigeria where you know that gap exists, right? Mm -hmm. And here, people are working, and you will see somebody who's your manager, and then you ask them. Oh, so where did you do your MBA? MBA? I don't have an MBA. I finished from a college, you know, mm -hmm. here in Canada, right? So it's really about experience. And mm. I think, yeah, people can consider colleges. Ontario, will, you will find average of 15,000 Canadian dollars. Uh, BC mm. is a good place uh, where you are looking for an average of between, say, 10,000 to 15,000 Canadian dollars. Mm -hmm. They still have mm -hmm. uh, uh, not as much um, um, expensive um, uh, colleges. And then if you are looking mm -hmm. for universities that are even also quite cheap, you go to Newfoundland, right? Mm. Uh, Newfoundland, Saskatchewan, those places would have quite good affordable institutions. But the only uh, drawback there is there's a, there's a high um, uh, competition, right? Because mm. so many people are looking for those less expensive schools. So there's so much oh. application there. So you have to come with your A game when you're applying to these schools, right? Uh, for you to be able to um, get that opportunity. Uh, but having said that though, uh, for people in technology, for people in tech, I would tell mm -hmm. them that, hey, if you're looking for you know good cities to be as a tech guy, go to Toronto, number one, go to mm -hmm. Vancouver, go to Ottawa, go to Kitchener, Waterloo. Those are like the tech hubs, right, in Canada where you have um, different, a lot of startups, a lot of uh, tech, Tech oriented companies, you know, uh, the, a lot of accelerator programs are also in those okay. cities, right? Uh, a lot of VCs are even headquartered in some of those cities, right? So, okay. I think tech folks should look at uh, those cities. Uh, okay. and yeah, so, and, um, and generally, um, for people who, for, for Nigerians who are looking for where there are most Nigerians, Toronto is where you'll find most Nigerians, of course, right? Um, the last census in um, 2016 had um, 18,000 Nigerians in Toronto and the GTA. Um, that's mm. the highest of uh, Nigerians in Canada. And um, in other cities, we are sort of uh, spread across. I think Calgary okay. would sort of be number two. Right? Mm. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, so I, I would say those are sort of the cities I, I would tell people who are looking to uh, move to, to Canada. Amazing. Thank you so much. Powerful information. And I hope someone out there, you know, you had your paper and your pen yeah. to yeah. write it down. Let me just rephrase what Tunde said. Newfoundland yes. and Sasha's uh, Sasha Crime. I always have a problem. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> so if you're looking for cheap institutions, if you're looking for cheap colleges, I think it's advice that you start from the college. Listen, yeah. there are times in life you need to bend because mm -hmm. you won't break. That's true. You are bending for the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So if you have to start with college, please, you know, go on the website or, you know, just do your research online for the schools available because, of course, you won't start mentioning schools. You know, you do your own research, right? Or you can, they can reach out to Human Squad, right? Yes. Do you can. guys yeah, provide that sure. service as well? Yes, yes we, do. we do. Yeah, so you see, reach out to Human Squad. I didn't say go and flood to this DM. <laughs> <laughs> structure is in place there is someone to attend to you at human squad right you know go to the right route go on his bio check how you can you know send human squad an email mm -hmm. let them know your request and then of course i'm sure they will pick it up from there exactly. yes and yes and for those who um tech bros and sis mm -hmm. they are sold you now consider toronto consider vancouver consider kitchener yeah. You know, consider those cities. Yeah. Go online, do your research, yeah. and I'm sure that you can find more information on Human Squad Canada website. Exactly. You know, navigate. Don't just take the information today. Do your own research. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Thank you so much. And so for those, you know, there are a lot of young people at home right now. I think my own heart as a mother, I'm quite concerned. Mm -hmm. um, if you lose one year of an academic session, it's a lot it's on a your lot. mental and emotional health. It's a lot. 
and we also know the economic you know situation in nigeria right now they cannot afford it. Yeah, yeah. Even the speed you've mentioned, the $5,000, I know, I know. $3,000. What would you advise them to do? For those who are at home right now, what would you advise them to do? A lot. Uh, there's a lot that one can do. I think for me, and I'll okay. take myself as, a, as an example, right? I always mm -hmm. like to do that. When I was in the mm -hmm. UI, there was a time we were on strike. I think it was seven mm -hmm. months or thereabouts. Uh, that we were on strike for but honestly i don't know how i spent that time and, and to, to today I, I still look back and i slap myself you know on the wrist and say hey perhaps i could have used that time for a lot of things mm. and, yeah exactly and uh, today I'll, I'll most likely and i'm very sure 100 percent very sure that i'll be benefiting or reaping whatever mm -hmm. investment that i've done that i'm an investment mm -hmm. not in terms of investing something or you know product but investing mm -hmm. myself right mm -hmm. today you find that uh majority of us then when we're on strike without just watching movies or visiting friends you know all this type of thing you don't need all that right no. so be honest um and, and again you know the the internet has really is it's a blessing you know mm. in many cases if you look at it yeah there, there's the doubt there's the negative side of it but to mm -hmm. an extent it's a blessing there's a lot of mm. things you can learn online i wish mm -hmm. till today i think one thing i don't i don't know how to do is coding which I feel if I had uh, picked up uh, the time back then, I would have definitely been good at it and uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, done it and learned it. I think what many people can do is there's, there are a lot of skills online that you can learn. You can start from mm -hmm. YouTube. It's free, mm -hmm. right? YouTube mm -hmm. is, is, is like a university on its own, right? Mm -hmm. you, can, you can sort of just look at yourself and say, what is it that I want to learn? Right. Uh, what is it that I want? How? What value do I want to add to myself in this period, in this waiting mm -hmm. period, so to speak, mm -hmm. before Hassu calls up the strike? Right. Mm -hmm. Coding. You go on YouTube. You go on um, Code Code Academy. There, there are a lot of those uh, platforms. Udemy, Coursera. There are a lot of those platforms. Right. That mm -hmm. you can learn something from. So it's it's you looking at yourself and saying, okay, what is it that I want to learn? It might not be in line with what you're already learning in school. And it might still mm -hmm. be in line with what you're learning in school. All the best. Uh, mm -hmm. It's still good, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you pick, you, you pick that up and you just, you know, be dedicated to it and begin to learn. Or you can sign yourself for a boot camp, right? There are mm -hmm. a couple of boot camps even in different cities. If there's no boot camp for you, in your city, there's probably a boot camp online that you can sign mm -hmm. up for, right? At a mm -hmm. level crisis right mm -hmm. uh, but what is important is while you are waiting and while you are sort of also using the time to catch up with friends and all that you're also using some of that time to invest in yourself right mm -hmm. invest in yourself learn one thing or the other right it could be graphic design uh, for some people who love photography it could be going out mm -hmm. to learn some, uh, photography skills for some people who love fashion it could be sewing at that period in time right whatever it is you know it's important that that period one uses it to learn and that's mm. uh, the bottom line of what I'm going to say here today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and and I, let me quickly add to that. You know, speaking of ASU, um, some of the things that I learned in the media and I was during the ASU strike. I, you know, I went to Olabisi Onapanja University. Okay. And there was this terrible strike mm. one time, oh. and I was home and I said, you know what, I want to volunteer. Mm. So I started volunteering. I was, I think I shared the story the other day on Twitter. I was carrying wow. bags for a celebrity. Wow. Because I knew that I had the flair for media, uh. you know, and I also understand the law of networking. Uh. You cannot do it alone. You want to be uh. this. From the comfort of my home in Nikotun, <laughs> who is going to see me? Uh. Right. So from one connection to the other, the other, you know, I was able to meet her. The truth is I use that period so well when i look back now mm. i realized that the lessons that i learned from her mm. it rubbed off on me wow. i didn't know what i was going through life yeah but i think lately i've been reflecting to say wait where did i pick up this thing this and i'm oh wow it was during this period you know this person taught me mm. you know confidentiality this person mm. taught me media mm. she taught me respect wow she taught me reputation and perception management mm. These are things you pay for, wow. right? But because she is vast, mm. and I didn't mind carrying the bag to mm. different functions. I did not mind. Who knew me then? Exactly. Right? But now exactly. the story is street cliche. Yeah. You know, and I remember when I shared on Twitter, people were like, I mentioned her name. I said, no. no. <laughs> I know Twitter. 
Yeah. The truth is that mystery is better than drama. It is better. It is better. Yeah. It is better. Because I will share now that you remember that she did something to you. You want to counter exactly. my story. Exactly. Exactly. You know, don't spoil my moment. So thank you so much for sharing your own experience and, you know, advising these young folks. Yeah. I hope you guys will take this advice seriously. Mm -hmm. Right? This is yeah. valuable information that Tunde is sharing to you. So Tunde, how have you been able to use Human Squad Canada to add value to the Canadian society? Ah, uh, good question. Um, it's a lot, right? Um, first is providing the opportunity for um, immigration consultants to really have direct access to clients that they usually wouldn't have access to, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people they wouldn't usually have access to. Uh, when we approached um, um, the immigration consultants back then before we launched Union Squad, you know, one thing we were able to bargain with them was bringing down the price totally. Right. Mm. I will share that here. Um, the average, the Canadian consultant, the immigration consultant in Canada, the average study visa application for them to sort of review an application, package it, and mm -hmm. submit it for someone, and mm -hmm. they usually charge from about 2,000 USD above. Right? Yeah, 2,000 USD above. <clears throat> Some go as far as, as far as far as 4K USD, 5K USD. Right? And then I said, I said, hey guys, I'm putting myself in many people's shoes. It's your services and i understand why because for some of them they have two clients three clients in a month and they are okay right because they are able to make up uh, for that uh, less number of uh, clients and i said there will be a lot of people coming to you through me and you cannot mm. charge that amount it's too much right and because majority of these people they also need money for their proof of fund you know for tuition for many of these things let's bring it down let's bring it down to 900 canadian so see the difference from 2,000 USD. And 2,000 USD will usually get to like 2,300 USD or 2,200 uh, Canadian rather. And then I said, no, let's bring mm -hmm. it up to about less than 1,000, make it 900 mm -hmm. um, uh, Canadian, right? And they said, okay, let's try for one month and see if it is sustainable. And we did and we were like, okay, yeah, it looks like we can do it. So I think one thing we've been able to do is first provide a pipeline of uh, people who are looking to migrate to Canada to the immigration consultants. That's mm -hmm. one. Two is um, lessen, lessen, lessen the price for people who are looking to move to Canada, right? who are looking to, to work with um, legitimate immigration consultants who are licensed, mm -hmm. who are regulated by the Canadian government. And um, I would say, uh, secondly, is an image of, you know, creating that image of an African immigrant, right? Who can sort of create a startup that is working a startup mm. has gone to win you know pitch competitions that have mm -hmm. raised um, um you know um, an investment from a us vc that has been able to get into google accelerator i think those are some of the things i can say uh we've uh, added to the canadian government and another thing we are paying taxes right it's a profitable um uh, startup you know it's paying taxes is <laughs> is um doing very well we've, we've hired we started as two people, myself and Kemilola. Today we are um, nine in total, right? Um, as a as a whole team, um, we have four people here in Canada. We have one in Russia, one in Kenya. We have two in Nigeria, three in Nigeria actually, right? Um, so yeah, so I, I would say we've we've gone we, we've we've been your typical small um, startup that that is growing and we're adding value in one way or the other that we can. That's, that's good. Thanks. And, uh, you know, uh, the Google Accelerator you mentioned will take yeah. me to the next question, which is the seed okay. um, capital you were able to raise recently. Yes. Yes. Um, it's turned over the news. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Google search of your name. I mean, I'm a media person. So <laughs> when I Google somebody, and the news that pops up first is their most recent accomplishment, yeah. uh, I think what that tells me is that this person has built their profile and their persona uh, over time to be considered by this, you know, major outlet. Uh, so how were you able to accomplish this major, major feat with Google Accelerator and the seed fund? Okay. So first, I, I think I've learned a lot in my life. Um, mm -hmm. Something I find that many people do, which I, I learned from history. I learned from a lot of things. I learned from the mm -hmm. little things that you, you probably not even think I would learn from. Something mm -hmm. I've learned is many people like myself who sort of build followership, who build these things, um, they try to hold on to that and say, it's just me. It's just me. I, I just have to keep driving it. But I've learned that it cannot just be me. It's not possible to just be me. I, I will never be able to do it all. 
And I think that has made me realize that, you know, working with, I, I can't be the smartest person in the room. Let me just put it that way. I shouldn't be the smartest person in the room. Mm -hmm. We cannot move forward if, if I'm the smartest person in the room. So what, mm -hmm. what I think has really helped is surrounding myself with people who are smart, people who are intelligent, people who mm -hmm. sort of want to move forward. And how we're able to sort of achieve this is uh, my COO, uh, Tenuel Adebayo, a CTO, Tonu Lokwebi, or the uh, business partnership lead, Vinit Dube, and our CFO, Lion Adebayo. I think these people, we've sort of just come together and say, guys, these are the things we need to keep achieving, right? And with them, with, the, with their help and with, um, you know, their vision and keen into the vision and also the mission of uh, Human Squad, uh, what we always do is we just sort of list the things we want to apply for. So with the Google Accelerator, I think it was also um, Temilola who saw it. And, you know, we have this group and she shared it and say, okay, I think we need to apply for this. We looked at um, the requirements. So, okay, it looks like we do fit into the requirement and the eligibility or whatever they're looking for. Um, and Yinka is our CFO. She's the one who always puts in our application. So what she always does is she will ask us, which are sort of the leads of uh, different section, and say, okay, these are the questions I want you to answer answer it and send it back to me. These are the questions I want. Sometimes we take a step at answering those questions and then we'll all sit down and look at it together and say, okay, it looks like this is good to go. And then we'll put mm -hmm. it in. Um, so that's how we sort of, uh, that's how we usually sort of run that, um, those um, uh, applications. And, and that was how we sort of put in the application for Google, right? Um, honestly, and one thing is when these things go, I just sort of let it go with a prayer and I always forget about it. Trust me, I always forget that we've put in an application somewhere. And uh, when the email came, um, you know, um, was the Mila who saw that, what? We got into Google Accelerator, you know, and we didn't know how big uh, of a deal it, it was, right? We just, we just said, that, say, okay, we got into Google, nice. But then when um, a platform like Better Kids, you know, even Google Canada, you know, um, um, uh, RBC, is it? No, uh, CBC, sorry, CBC Radio, you know, reached okay. out to say, hey, want to interview on live radio, you know, all those type of things. Okay, this looks like it's a big deal, right? Mm. Um, and they sent us uh, just, just uh, today is Sunday, just the day before yesterday on Friday, they sent us a pack, right? A Google startup, uh, Google for startups pack. It's a, it's a big box with a lot of different merch. We're like, okay, this looks like you know, it's, it's a big deal. And we, we met with them on Thursday with um, our mentor in Google and another program lead. So, yeah, so I, I, that was how we really got into it. It's really mm -hmm. a big stepping stone for us, um, given that uh, Google will open a lot of doors for, for the startup. So we're really just looking forward to the opportunity. And the VC, same way, same way, same way of, same process of, you know, putting an application. Um, mm -hmm. But for this particular VC, I think for them, uh, we met with them, we spoke with them, and they really mm -hmm. love the vision, they love the mission, they love what we are building. And um, they're like, hey, guys, we just we cannot miss the opportunity of investing, investing in you at this point in time, uh, given mm -hmm. that there's so much potential there uh, that we see in you. We see that uh, this in, in years to come, this will go to be something, and we really just um, want to be part of it right now. So, and, and we're glad that um, our, our VC is they have a community. That's another reason. Okay. It's a, it's, it's like a job interview. As much as I, an employer is looking to hire, you are looking to say, is this employer the right fit for me as well, right? But I think one thing that we really love about this particular VC is the fact that it's a community-driven um, uh, venture capital where you have different founders. You know, we mm -hmm. have, we have um, our own internal portal, you know, different things is going on in the back end. There's a lot of things going on in the back end that I can't uh, share, but, you know, there's so much um, going, so much perks that we get, so much benefits uh, that we get mm -hmm. from just being in that community. So mm -hmm. I, I'll say, yeah, I said that was how we were able to get it. And again, remember what I said earlier on, on structure? If there is mm -hmm. no structure, if you are just, you are just, um, social media sensation, you're just sharing posts, building community, but there's no structure there. Mm. To what end? I always ask, to what end? To what mm. end? Right? Mm. So you have to be able to, and this is not about building wealth, and many times I don't even think about the money. Many times I think about the longevity. How, mm. how do we take this in such a way that this can hire so many people? Right? I, I, I never in the, I'll say, I, ne well, I can say that I never in the life of me thought I would hire somebody from outside another race as a full-time person working in Canada, right? And not as soon as sometimes this year, 
right? But it happens, right? And it's about that structure. If there's no structure, there really will not be that opportunity for longevity, for creating jobs, for even be able to impact as many lives as possible eventually, right? So, yeah. So, yeah. So that's that's amazing. Very valid point you've raised, um, but I have to really go back to something you said. <laughs> I'm a pro woman in organizations, and I realized that you mentioned the co founder, she's a woman, right? Yes, and she's my wife as well. Okay, so, <laughs> yes. uh, madam, I'd like to interview you uh, because you know, I'll, the do the intro. I'll do the intro for sure. I'd appreciate that. Um, you know, checking with you on WhatsApp after this conversation yeah. so I can link up with her. Yeah, yeah. I feel that, um, you know, sharing from the woman's standpoint as well yeah. would also help, you know, exactly. other women who, are, who want to go into tech. Yeah. So yeah. while we were talking, I was ideating to say, mm. okay, um, Tunde right here has told us the story. Mm. How about we hear the, you know, yeah. hear from the woman's yeah. side. Yeah. Let us hear. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've been, one thing I love in the society right now is the amount of women in tech. In tech, yeah. It's amazing. It is amazing. beautiful to see amazing. women doing amazing things. There is amazing. a deal like Rupa Miji, yeah. Miriam. Yeah, yeah. I'm so proud of them, you know, and, you know, I'm so proud that your CFO is also a woman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you said that, I think. Also a woman. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's also a woman. Amazing. She 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 uh worked with PWC, so she comes with that experience of you know uh the big four. Uh mm. big four, yeah. So she she's she's intelligent. Uh, it's I'm, I'm proud to really have her on the team. You know, she mm. keeps us, she keeps us on check. She ensures that you know, when it comes to finances and all, we are. Mm -hmm. you know, but but she's amazing, and I'm glad to also have her, have her on the team. Beautiful, and I must say that I commend you for acknowledging them um, while you were talking, and that's a communication. Maybe because I'm a satisfied interpersonal communicator, mm. so when people are talking, mm. I am picking the fact, I am picking the figures. Mm you know, something that I can also take out mm. and use for myself. And mm. while you were talking, I realized that you were making room for everybody yeah. in your team. Yeah. yeah, It was not a me, me thing. No, 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 no. We, it can be. I did not start on my own. I didn't do this on my own. No, no. There are people who are in the engine room. They yes. might not be housing like me, exactly. but they are I'm ready the, back. I'm the poster boy. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the one out there. But trust me, I think that's the thing. The yeah, yeah. Yes, people don't, you know, and I love the fact that you've used your poster boy role. Mm. You've turned it into something so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And I'm really proud of you. Thank you. And I must say that because, I mean, I know that I featured your men who inspire. Thank you so much. And to know that this growth has just happened in the span of, say, two, three years. Yeah. Based on your consistency. Uh, Let me tell you something. The reason why a lot of us follow you is because of your consistency. Thank you so much. You are so consistent and you are focused on your goal. And that's one thing a lot of people don't have. This is my passion. Don't talk about climate change. <laughs> exactly. No, 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 no. Speak to your, exactly. to your focus. So exactly. thank you, Tunde, for, for sharing that. Um, you guys, please share the videos. You know, ask people to watch and all of that. Tunde is not available directly. Of course, he's accessible. Yeah. And please know that accessibility is not availability. That's true. Right? So because somebody is accessible, you can follow, you can send DM. They might not circle back to you Immediate. as fast That's as you want. True. Please let us respect that. What are the advices? Because I know that a couple of you joined based on the information that I've shared out there. Reach out to Human Squad. Yeah. Make it professional. Yeah. Reach out to them to seek the information that you want. And I want to ask you, Tunde, did you guys have any package particularly for women in Human Scout? Um, we don't have any package particularly for women. Um, I mm -hmm. would say um, Canada hasn't structured it that way where they, um, you know, they offer immigration uh, pathways for women particularly, although there are some mm -hmm. immigration pathways that are um, targeted towards maybe refugees or people mm -hmm. who are fleeing their homes, mm -hmm. right? uh, but not particularly based on gender, right? Mm -hmm. However, though, there are a lot of um, non-governmental agencies here, and I think that's like our future goals, our long-term mm -hmm. we'll be working mm -hmm. with 
uh, many people um, in that space that are helping mm -hmm. maybe uh, women that are experiencing violence in their homes, you mm -hmm. know, that have been traumatized and all that work with them, especially immigrant women, right, mm -hmm. um, that, are, that are finding it hard to transition into the system or, or, to, or to sort of transition out of those, um, those sort of marriages or those sort of bad experiences, right? That would mm -hmm. be, and those, were, those would be like our um, social court yes. um, work. Yes, sir. Exactly. Thank you very much. Yes, yes sir. Yes. You know, I was, what I was even asking is, you know, packages for tech. Oh, I see. For women, you know, as a, you know, because for every guest that come on my show, mm -hmm. I make room for my sisters, right? Oh, nice, nice. To so, you know, is there something you know, it might be a plan that would, you know, you would have in the future. Okay. But just because there's this high influx of women trying to go into tech now, I see. that's why I asked. So is there, you know, something, a program that you've designed to support those women who want to go into tech? Mm. If you get what I'm saying. Yes, yes. You know. I think mm -hmm. that one, yes, uh, there is something. Uh, for instance, we work directly with um, some small accelerators here and mm -hmm. in the U.S. Um, Atimola has also been uh, a beneficiary of those, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so what we do is what she does particularly is um, she works directly with women who are here, um, mm -hmm. and women and also women immigrants mm -hmm. who are looking to go into tech. And what she does, yes. is, which I love, is she helps them review their applications before they submit mm -hmm. it to those accelerators. She helps them review to ensure that they can get those grants. She helps mm -hmm. them to ensure that, hey, you can actually, you've, pre you've presented yourself well. This is how you can mm -hmm. do this application so that you can get mm -hmm. it. So I'll say mm -hmm. that's, what, that's one I can talk about. Uh, yes. I know we haven't really termed it and uh, called it a particular name, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's on, and also on a ad, ad hoc basis as well. Connect us. <laughs> okay. 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 For sure. For sure. Because for sure. you know, sure. there's an idea in my head. We'll okay. talk, discuss that off camera. Okay. Um, that I believe would also gonna uh, support for the black women in tech here. Awesome. Immigrant awesome. women. Awesome. And me having the background of media, you know, okay. amplifying that with a media tool. Okay. Would I believe would also give women squad that visibility. Thank you so much. You know, because one thing I always tell um amazing humans like yourself who are founders is that do not don't limit your visibility mm -hmm. and that's for any other entrepreneur who is here mm -hmm. don't ever feel that people know you exactly exactly that's don't walk true. into the room believing everybody knows you that's true. That's right true. you know because i work with a lot of clients because of my peer background mm -hmm. and i tell them there should be consistency with your visibility mm -hmm. listen if you give ten thousand dollars to somebody put it online put it online if you organize a small accelerator or boost camp, put it online. Fine. Okay. Even if it is just one media platform, mm. make sure that your SEO is optimized to a level where everything you do can be found online. Mm. Right? So while you're talking to you know investors and donors, they can see everything. That's true. You know, That's and also it amplifies your Wikipedia page. That's true. Someone is going on your Wikipedia page, they don't need to navigate everything. They can see all your links. They can see everything you've been, you know, talking about. So I'd appreciate Thank if you link me with Madame. So but if, if I may ask, what city are you in? Toronto. Oh, nice. Are you serious? I didn't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You, you, you Downtown. Did. Okay. Oh, nice. You didn't let us know this, though. You, okay. No problem. Well, you <laughs> see, uh, we would like to learn from people like you. <laughs> and uh, you said something. You know, I think um, life, in a way, when you grow so fast, uh, you get to a level where you need to slow down. That's true. Right. I believe I'm one of those people that uh, I'd say I had the privilege. Mm. to grow so fast in the face of the media. Mm. And sometimes when you've had something so much, the media leaves and breathes in me. Mm. You want to be off the radar. Mm. You want to actually focus on the things that give you joy, that, mm, the absolutely. things that make you happy. I see. Without necessarily just, just you mm. by yourself, doing your whole thing, mm. learning as well. Mm. Learning. Wow. Because you cannot learn with distraction. Wow. You cannot learn with distraction. Mm -hmm. You know, my lifestyle, my work is out there. Mm -hmm. I'm usually out there. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like a face, privileged to be a face for a lot of women. Yeah. You know, and doing the work on the back end, let me tell you something. Obscurity mm -hmm. is a blessing in disguise. It is a blessing. It gives you the room to see people for who they really are. Mm -hmm. 
And I think a lot of people should do that. Mm. You know, people don't know how to do that. Learn to step back. Mm. Sometimes you feel you are so big, mm. but sometimes humble yourself mm. so you can see how the person who says they are good people online, mm. see how they would treat a person who is proud, a, a janitor. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. In real life, yeah. because talk is sweet online, exactly. right? And that's something that I mean, it's a story that I believe that I'm gonna share someday. Okay. Um, some of the lessons that I've learned in obscurity, mm. myself imposed on obscurity mm. <laughs> because <laughs> I needed to learn. Mm. I needed to see myself as just pencil in the eyes of mm. God, and mm. and that's it. So, you know, I mean, it's your session, you know, but you know, just me no, no, putting I it out there. <laughs> Even my, my, I myself, you know, I've learned, I've learned a great thing from what you just shared. But thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I mean, you just, it, it, it builds you. Yeah. It builds your humility too. Yeah. It does. That's because true. I was telling someone, I say, if I meet Oprah, nobody go hear Pam. Before exactly. I go post that picture, it go take time. Exactly. I go post them, exactly. nobody go prepare them. I go exactly. post them, maybe if it be one time, maybe say people know they talk about Oprah, I go just post a picture. Exactly. Pam. Exactly. Exactly. Esther, you meet Oprah. I say yes. Yeah, so <laughs> why you not compose when you meet Oprah? I say no, no be like that. Life be. Exactly. You know, I know. I know they do gra gra. You know, maybe we'll take time. I love that. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so of course we're going to connect beyond awesome. this. For sure. For and sure. I am so glad. I must say this because there are people watching. Tunde is very humble. Thank you so much. Tunde is very humble. I have met a lot of people who have as much relevance as he does, and he's, he's a very busy person. But when it comes to somebody making room and just saying, okay, you know what, I need to ground myself. Let me step back. Oh, this person needs me at a particular time. Let me make myself available. He's that person. So I must say to you that, you know, you've done an amazing job with Thank that. You. But that brings me to the last question, sure. which is, please, find out what for young people who are watching. Find out what for... There, I, I believe there are people who joined today who are probably in distress. Yeah. Who don't even know how to navigate life. Yeah. They don't know where to start from. Some have parents who cannot afford one square meal. That's true. I was sharing a story with my guest yesterday when a young lady on Facebook, she saw one of my pictures, right? And then she said, I've just you cannot understand what I am going through. I said, what are you going through? She said, I've been fetching one thousand since I've been home because of this hassle. I am tired. I said, girl, you've been fetching water. Water alone. <laughs> Should I tell you my story? So I asked her to go to where I grew up. Uh. I paid for the TCA. I bought her data. Uh. I told her to go to Ijegun. Uh. And then go to Ikotun. So start from Ikotun. So she took a walk. You see, that walk is like endurance walk. Wow. <laughs> and I told her, look at the proximity of where I put pay. Uh -huh. and basia on my head uh -huh. to fetch water, uh -huh. right? And I did that diligently. You have free shelter. Uh -huh. These people are giving you free food, your parents. Oh. You're not paying bills. Mm -hmm. And you're complaining about water. About water, fetching water in, this, in the house, and I in said, the same place. They didn't send you out of the house to go and look for a job so you can contribute to something. Exactly. In the house. At the end of that, because I tell people, now let's do practical aspire to aspire now. Uh -huh. Not online. The places that shift off let people go there mm. and see for themselves and that's one thing i'll start doing uh -huh. you know she was humbled by the time she got home she was tired i said oh you didn't carry basia mm. <laughs> you didn't carry kelp mm. you didn't carry tape mm. and you are tired but i did that for many years mm. from one street to the other mm. what out my head mm. and i told her i said you need to get up and do something if you say that you are going to volunteer, let your parents see you as a valuable tool exactly. in the house, exactly. not a liability. Exactly. So when you are done fetching the water, maybe you have too much time at home. That's why you are fetching the water. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So please, um, like I said, you know, it's always amazing chatting with folks like you. Advice to these young people who we'll look um, up to you. Yeah, so uh, thank you so much, Mother um, Mesta. I think um, for me, you know, like, like you said, um, growing up, I grew up into a very good family, so to speak. I've actually never shared my personal story before. I've always, it's for me on social media, I really just share the content I need to share and sometimes mm -hmm. share mm -hmm. the personal story, but I've really never shared this story before where, for me, I grew up in a very well-to-do family. My dad was really well-to-do. We actually grew up in the North, in Meiduguri, mm -hmm. so to speak, uh, but no state. Um, attended schools with you know, um, governor's kids, you know, like 
were really well to do, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, as things will happen, you know, things got bad like, along the line, and I started to see what life really meant. You know, where you would you would go a day with maybe just one meal, or you needed to eat, and you would go and buy food at the restaurant. So you buy something like eba and the soup, so that you can use the soup to eat food at home. Right, you know those type of things. Right? I did experience, we experienced it, and um, it was such, um, you know, it was it was actually a very terrible experience. However, though, I think one thing, and that's what I'll I'll share here, one thing for people who are always in a distress or in a, in a, in a in a situation where they think, oh, my parents can't provide well for me, or or I'm not getting all that I need. Mm -hmm. That one thing they will always provide, which I, I will always be grateful to my parents for, is education, right? Education. It's it's the key to many things. I think I'm so thankful for my undergrad at the University of Ibadan. If I if I did not get anything, right, I think I got that one right. I, mm -hmm. I, I would say that it's that's always the foundation to many things for you, right? Your education is very important. I know that a lot of people will say, yeah, but musicians didn't go to school, these didn't go to school, but you're not a musician, and until then, you have to go to school, right? Yes. Even <laughs> soccer players are going to school, right? Yes. Um, I know a lot of people say, but people in sport, yes, but go to school first, until then, oh. until then, go to school. So I'll say, uh, my, my advice first is education. Ensure that you hold on to it, right? Um, I didn't finish school with the first class. I wish I did. I didn't, I didn't sit up until my third year, right? Um, it was on the in the third year that I, I started to get um, 80, 70, 90 in my courses in school, right, in third year, but it was already too late, right? Um, so if you have the opportunity, you get into school first year or you start something, you get into school the first year, always be, always try to be the best. And that's mm -hmm. why when I came to Canada, I, I, I knew I wasn't going to settle for less. The distinction to mm -hmm. me was natural because I already knew I had it in me, but I was at, at first in in the UI then, first level, 100 level, 200, I wasn't serious, right? I was still naive, you know, you are, you are, you are by yourself. There's freedom. <laughs> freedom can be detrimental to many things. It can be detrimental yes. to success, to your growth. Yes. So make sure that you are maximizing it to your own benefit. Invest in mm -hmm. yourself when you are. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Mm -hmm. It's very, mm -hmm. very important. Freedom comes with, you know, it comes with its own um, negativity as well and it's important that yes. you use that time wisely so i'll say mm -hmm. that things might be hard now um you know I, for me i'm always thankful i think one thing i never did was to get distracted mm -hmm. um, and i will end it by saying this i, I was in Ibadan one day um i think i was still in ui maybe mm. 200 or 300 level i was at my um uh, my aunt's place my mom's elder sister she has a shop mm -hmm. in Ibadan. And this person who was preaching, he was passing by and he came by to me and he said, what, I, I don't know why he asked me that question. He said, what assurance do you have that you're going to mm. have the future? And I said, I'm not scared of tomorrow. I don't care what's happening now because I know that I'm a child of God. And that was what I said. I said, I know I'm a child of God, right? So I think uh, for youth, it's important to also have a relationship with God, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're a believer, um, hold on to your faith. Uh, mm -hmm. be steadfast uh, persevere continue right you'll be very surprised sometimes the, I, I believe that majority of the blessings I'm getting now are the prayers I've pre prayed before it's not what I ask for now it's probably because I prayed for them before so mm. yeah uh, not to talk too much but um, it's it's not the end whatever you're facing now trust me as long as mm. you're breathing that opportunity is still there and um, I, I pray that every, everything will work out Amen. Thank you for yes. acknowledging yes. God. It was the same thing, um, Steve Akintayo of mm. the, re the real estate guru. Mm. He did on my show the other day. Mm. And he, because I had to ask him, he said, listen, Esther, mm. people go forth in life. Men go forth in life and mm. forget to, you know, acknowledge the source. Mm. So I am happy that you acknowledge God because a lot of us need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and people don't know the power of that. Yeah. Sometimes acknowledging God is you also inspiring somebody exactly. to say, listen, exactly. prayer works. Exactly. Do the work, but prayer also works. Exactly. Exactly. Somebody has a question. Let me just quickly ask you. No she problem. said, my course is two years. Okay. How do I get PGWP 
okay. and finally convert to permanent resident, what is the best route? Oh, it's very easy. Um, you, you, you have your, your course is two years, it's even great, right? Uh, people who come to Canada to study, if you do one year program, you get mm -hmm. one year uh, PGWP. Mm -hmm. If you do two year program, you get three years PGWP. So for somebody like that, when you are done with school, you will get a three year PGWP. And when you are working uh, for that, within that three year period, mm -hmm. immediately you get your one year experience in Canada. You are eligible mm -hmm. for what is called the Canadian Experience Class for PR, right? Mm -hmm. You can use that to become a permanent resident. And mm -hmm. afterwards, um, when you become a permanent resident, you have three years within five years uh, period to become a citizen, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's, that's what I did. Student, PGWP, PR, uh, student mm -hmm. CEC, and then uh, becoming a citizen. So that's, that's how they will be able to do it. Thank you so much. Um, I'll just take one more question. I think we have another one, then we'll wrap up the session. I know you're busy. Um, this person says that I am lucky. Mr. Tunde, I'm a Nigerian, but my wife is a nurse and a Ukrainian. Got the Canada visa and a three-year work permit. What are the cities you think we can relocate and still get PR? Um, you can get a PR in any city. Um, and if, mm -hmm. I'm, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm getting it right, the, the, the wife is a nurse, right? And yes. And got a work permit, right? Yes, three okay. years. Okay, that's, that's great. Um, wherever city you are, you can get a PR. Um, PR is not restricted to any city. Uh, that's one. Um, I think another thing you want to look out for is places with high demand with, based on your own job and her own mm -hmm. people, right? Mm -hmm. Nurses will usually be needed um, anywhere anyways uh, because yes. the healthcare in Canada is, you know... Is, yes, frontline workers. Exactly, <laughs> frontline workers are so needed. But I, I will I really say PR is not restricted to any city and, mm. um, yeah, you can, you can yeah. definitely relocate. I think, I believe you, you answered that and... Yeah. Um, Okay, please, as a student visa holder, when is the best time to enter the pool? I don't know what pool. <laughs> um, as, a, as a student holder, I, I'm guessing this person is asking when is the best time to enter the pool, the express entry pool. Um, as, a, mm. as a student um, visa holder, the best time to mm -hmm. enter the pool will mm -hmm. be uh, once you find out you're eligible, you've done worse, uh, based mm -hmm. on your background, and also IELTS, based on your, uh, based on your English proficiency. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes some people are students here and they're already eligible for um, express entry and they get into the pool, they get an ITA and they even transfer mm -hmm. from a PR. Mm -hmm. So uh, most important time to get into, into the pool is when you have your West and when you have your IELTS. However, if you don't have all that and you're just mm -hmm. really waiting to you are done school, first mm -hmm. wait till you're done school, get your PGWP. Hopefully it's a three-year PGWP. When you get that PGWP, mm -hmm. the best time to enter the pool is immediately you get your one-year experience. And before that one year experience hits, and I'm talking of the Canadian one year experience, before that one year experience hits, ensure you've done West and you've done IELTS, mm -hmm. so that as mm -hmm. your one year is hitting, you are getting into the pool. Mm. Um, so sorry, this person is asking if you know the person we talked about is wife. Okay. He wants to know if they need to write. Exactly. Do we need to write? Yes. Do we need to write? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You do. Anybody who needs to become a peer in Canada will always write an English exam, even when you are in Canada. Students who people who come here to study who study, immediately they have done that study. When they finish that one-year Canadian work experience, they must do that IELTS, right, even while they are in Canada. And mm. um, to round it up, um, anybody who's coming to Canada as a PR, British citizen, mm. American citizen, wherever citizen, mm -hmm. must write IELTS mm -hmm. to become a PR. So yes, they have to yeah. write English. Thank you so much, Tony. No uh, please, if you have more questions, go on this bio, like I said. Yeah. Direct your questions to Human Squad Canada because Tunde yeah. might not be able to answer all those questions in the DM. Yes. It is not because it does not value you, but you need to understand that public people have limits too to the level of engagement yeah. online. Please yeah. always know that, yeah. you know, especially when they're available on all platforms. So always know that when you're sending someone a DM, no sense of entitlement. No, no, if yeah. there's another way to reach them, please use it. Yeah. Thank There's you. always information in people's bio. Always yeah. use it. Yeah. Okay. If he's not replying here, or better still go on LinkedIn. I yeah. tell people. Yeah. Sometimes LinkedIn yeah. is even a better way to, to connect with folks. That's but make it professional now because true. it cannot be yeah. coming on LinkedIn with a troll vibe. Yeah. 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 Right. So please, um, you know, let me just put that out there. 
And please follow me and subscribe yes, to my YouTube please. channel. Yes, please. Sunday, subscribe to my YouTube channel as I well. <laughs> I'll send you the link so you can help me post on yes, Twitter sir. so your people can also subscribe. I I'd appreciate it. For sure. I will. This is going to be posted on my page and it's going to be on my YouTube channel as well okay. for those who might need the information. Okay. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank I really, so really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Really Thank you. May God honor you. Amen. I will connect with you and Madame. For sure. For sure. For sure. Beyond the, you know, the public high. For sure. Right? For sure. And see what we can do collaboratively. No problem. No Thank problem. you so much, Tunde. Thank Have so an much. amazing you evening. Too. And God bless you. Amen. You too. Bye for now. Bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, bye. Bye.